Hello everybody, Mitsugamer here, and I am here to talk about one of my favorite recent games that I've played through twice, Persona 5. I'm sure most of you have already heard of this game considering the overload of praise it got, the amount of spin-offs it has, and of course Joker's addition to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Persona 5 is the sixth installment to the Persona franchise where you play as high schoolers who go into a supernatural realm, explore in a dungeon as you fight off shadows, and reach your goal to save lives or reform society. Your purpose differs depending on what Persona game you play. Meanwhile, the other half of the game is about you going to school, hanging out with friends, going on dates, and doing various activities that will help you fight against the evil and corrupted. If you haven't played Persona 5, I highly recommend getting it as it's become one of my favorite games of all time. It has a very unique style, lovable characters, dilemmas, themes, and everything that could just make a game stand out. While I could gush about Persona 5 and how much of an awesome game it is, I am here to talk about the confidants that you interact with. Confidants, also known as cooperation in Japan, are similar to social links from Persona 3 and 4. The advantage of socializing with your friends was to increase the experience points for fusing personas based on the arcana they represent. In Persona 5, on the other hand, spending time in ranking up your confidants will give you certain perks and advantages to help you progress more efficiently through the game, making the social links a lot more useful than just experience points and story. And I maxed out all confidants and 100 percent at this game in only two playthroughs. So for this video, I'm going to give you my top 17 confidants from least best to best in the original version of Persona 5, so this is not the royal version. Now, while there's technically 21 confidants in the game, four of them rank up as the story progresses, so I will exclude those four characters. And I'm going to be ranking the 17 based on how useful they are as a confidant and what perks they can give you beyond just interesting stories and dilemmas, because all of them are really good. So if you haven't maxed out all confidants, don't worry as I will be light on story spoilers. With that said, still spoilers. So without further ado, let's talk about the top 17 best confidants in Persona 5. Acting as a phantom thief would have been more efficient alone. You could have gone about it that way. However, you did not. There are merits to having associates. That's what you decided. Am I wrong? Ichiko Oya of the Devil Arcana. The irony with Oya being my least favorite confidant is that she was actually one of the first confidants I ended up maxing out on my first playthrough. And I guess a lot of that had to do with the fact that I found her story engaging and interesting. But the reason Oya is low on the list is because the abilities you gain are quite worthless. Bonded with Oya can decrease the security level penalty when caught by shadows in palaces and lower the level more overnight when you return back to reality. The reason why I find this perk useless is because even if you do accidentally slip up and get caught by shadows, you would either have to be very bad at the game or a reckless idiot not going for an ambush to make things more efficient and easier on yourself. Simply attacking the enemies does not put you at a greater advantage, so you would logically go for an ambush to save on your HP and health items. And on top of that, you can lower the security level just by simply winning an ambush battle. These are more convenience perks to decrease the chances of a high security level, which I doubt anyone had to worry about. I mean, who the hell gets the security level to 100% without being a certain blonde idiot? You little- However, I don't de-recommend Oya, as she is a good character, and bonding with her can increase your charm stat. Otherwise, she's the number one confidant I wouldn't worry about maxing out on your first playthrough, like I did. She may be a likable drunk journalist, but perhaps you should listen to her transgender friend and not come here more often. Okay, Lala-chan, time to celebrate our agreement! Bring out my bottle! And two glasses, please! Oh, come on, please! Whoa, her silence is golden. Fine, fine, fine. I won't make the high schooler drink. Mudhisha Iwa of the Hateman Arcana. 
In order to start a confidant with him, your guts must be at level 4. You can bond with him almost any time after the deadline for Kamashida, but it will take the majority of the game to increase your guts, making him not worth maxing out on your first playthrough. The advantages of bonding with Iwa is to increase your proficiency, unlock a gun customization, get 50% off of gun customization, and being able to customize higher gun levels. And while this all sounds very beneficial, there are problems with gun customization in general. For one, it's not a perk you're going to use often, and being able to customize a gun does not always guarantee a better firearm, and here's why. The guns can only be customized to one option, so it's not like you can choose how to customize individual gun parts for better accuracy, damage, or ammunition. And sometimes customizing a gun can end up increasing your attack power, but decreasing your accuracy. So, the options for improvement are very bare bones, and the guns are used the least in battle anyway due to its limited ammunition. If you're gonna bond with Iwa, I would say only go for him so you can at least get the trophy for customizing a gun. Otherwise, I would probably focus on other confidants and save Iwa for New Game Plus. And bear in mind, you will need max guts in order to get his mementos request and to max him out. So even if you're a gun enthusiast, I would personally recommend you rely on your personas and melee weapons a lot more. And plus, there is a better confidant that deals with guns than Iwa. And it's pretty pathetic considering how young this confidant is. Hmm. Well, I guess you've got the heart of an enthusiast. <laughs> You're a strange one, kid. Haru Akumura of the Empress Arcana. Haru will be the last confidant you can possibly gain, but you will have to wait until near the last third of the game to bond with her. Now I will say this, the moment she is available, rank her up to 1, and that should be all you need for your first playthrough. The reason I say this is because she requires max proficiency to even start her second rank. Because of that, I didn't even get her second rank on my first playthrough. The advantages of bonding with her at the first rank alone is so she can plant food, specifically used for SP, and it's entirely free. And that should be more than enough and beneficial for you to get through the remaining palaces in one go. The reason Haru is low on this list is because most people probably couldn't raise her confidant past rank 1 since they needed max proficiency, and her further perks are really just adding more to what she grows in the garden and less time to grow them. Which sounds very beneficial, but the problem is that you may never get these benefits on your first playthrough aside from rank 1. And when you do get to New Game Plus, getting SP is hardly a problem since you can get plenty of SP through vending machines and other methods. Because of that, most of the advantages are locked out or can be almost worthless. Outside of that, you will also get the usual companion abilities like Endure, Baton Pass, and Follow Up. Other than that, this is one potential girlfriend I wouldn't bother getting with until New Game Plus. And Hatless wonders why she is everyone's least favorite Phantom Thief. This is... Yusuke Katagawa of the Emperor Arcana. What can our hot looking male artists do to help the Phantom Thieves other than break a man's heterosexuality? Well, believe it or not, there is something he could use his artistic skills for. Unfortunately, it's not something you're going to use that often. With Yusuke, you can duplicate skill cards as long as you have a copy of the card you want to duplicate and a blank card for him to draw on. At rank 1, he can duplicate low rank skill cards. At rank 5, he can duplicate mid-rank skill cards, and at rank 7, he can duplicate high-rank skill cards. And any other ranks are all just companion abilities. And unlike Haru, where it will take days to grow food, it only takes Yusuke one day to duplicate a card. Skill cards are items that can be used to give Joker's personas a certain skill, which all sounds very damn useful, but in both my first and even my second playthrough, there's only a few times where I use this advantage. And honestly, the only benefit from duplicating cards is when you duplicate the high rank ones, particularly the passive skill cards. 
cards that I would recommend duplicating are the High Encounter card, which you can receive from one of the Mementos requests from Mishima. The other cards I would recommend duplicating are Repel and Drain Attacks and Endure. There are also going to be rare moments where this ability is going to be very useful, particularly to complete one or two requests from Caroline and Justine, or to obtain the Beyond Rehabilitation trophy. So there's definitely good uses for this perk if you get Yusuke up to rank 7, so why do I not recommend it as much? I think mostly because skill cards are very rare items to get in the game. Honestly, even though I've been in this game twice, I had to look up and see where you can get blank cards that are required to itemize a persona or have Yusuke duplicate a card. And apparently the best advantage is to have one of Futaba's abilities scan a particular enemy to which you would have to demand that enemy that said item which could very well be a skill card or even a blank card. And you might also find cards and treasure chests within mementos but that's pretty much what I could get from a little bit of research so I don't know where to get these cards honestly. And because these cards are going to be almost useless to the point that you're only going to focus on the passive skills and even have more than enough skills because of the bonus XP from fusions from your confidant ranks, skill cards are just not something you're going to use a lot except for the rare occasion. This ability is by no means useless because I've definitely used it, just not something you're going to use often. Besides, you should be demanding more opportunities to take your shirt off for the hottest male character in the game. By the way, what's in your hand? A card? Hmm. Whenever I see blank paper, I have the urge to draw something on it. May I? Makoto Nijima of the Priestess Arcana. Bullshit! She should be the Empress! Ah, my sweet, sweet girlfriend from my first playthrough. And likely the only one I'll ever get in real life. Anyways, Makoto is a confidant who is immediately available after you complete the third palace. You will need rank 3 knowledge to bond with her, and the only major downside is that you will need max charm to start her second half of the story. On the upside, however, both knowledge and charm are the easiest social stats to get. Makoto has the usual companion abilities along with the ability to further scan enemies in battle. At rank 1 you can see potential drop items from enemies, and at rank 7, highlighted enemies will display if a certain attack will be nullified, reflected, drained, or is a weakness without having to analyze an enemy. And that's it! Her ability is mostly a convenience perk with a higher warning of what attack should and should not be used. I do strongly recommend her as she can make battles go by more efficiently. And besides, she's the queen to my castle of the dusty, dusty attic, yeah. Great character, good perks, and she is one of the fan thieves I found using the most. A good confidant, and I wish she was higher on this list. <laughs> what a funny thought. Studying to become a head of police while working as a thief. On to Kamiki of the Lover's Arcana. This one might be a controversial pick since On is one of the easiest characters to max out, if not the one girlfriend that everyone went with, if not Makoto. But the reason I put her low on the list is because of two reasons. One, there's not a ton of enemies in the game who are weak to fire compared to some other elemental abilities, and her gun ability is definitely the most pathetic unless all enemies were weak to gunfire. So in my experience, while she can be a very good companion, especially in the first two palaces and the last bits of the game, I haven't found the need to use her a lot compared to Makoto. The second reason is that honestly, there's not really a clear answer on what her ability does. I mean, she has the usual companion abilities, which are always helpful, but then her other abilities include further aid in and shadow negotiations. I mean, every companion except for Futaba can aid in shadow negotiations at either rank 3 or 4, where they can interfere with a shadow that doesn't approve of your responses when you try to have it lend you its power. With On on the other hand, this ability happens at rank 2, but it doesn't stop there. At rank 5 she can lower the demands of shadows, and at rank 7 she will greatly aid in negotiation. And by all means, this is a very useful perk because this helps you gain more personas, helping you complete more of your persona compendium. And yes, On should be very high on this list. 
but the problem, as I mentioned before, is that I haven't found on that useful compared to the other companions. So in most cases, when you end up in Shadow Negotiations, you will not be able to have On's additional help to make these negotiations easier. And when it comes down to it, this is more of a convenience perk than it is an instant win for negotiations. And there will be another confidant who actually will cover that. On, by all means, definitely deserves to be higher on this list. But because of the fact that you're not going to use her all the time does make her quite a burden on the group when she has to be a backup member. But if you want to make Shadow Negotiations easier, then I highly recommend relaxing before you get too many characters to deal with. Mm hmm You can lean on me too, if you need it. <laughs> Tai Takemi of the Death Arcana Tai is the very first confidant you could optionally bond with the moment the deadline for your first palace starts. And she was actually one of the confidants I maxed out on my first playthrough. She serves as an alleyway doctor who serves as the game's medicine store to use as items in palaces, which you will need a lot of. At rank 1, you can increase the selection of healing items at the clinic. At rank 3, you will get more healing items. At rank 5, you will add more support items. And at rank 7, you will get a 50% discount, which is massively useful. And maxing out her confidant will increase the selection of revival items. I strongly recommend Ganner at rank 1 the moment the deadline for Kamashita starts, so you can get the items available to buy. Because in order to start her second rank, you will need level 2 guts to continue her confidant, which can be easy to rank up if you just buy a book from Shimboya or rent a book from the school library to increase your guts, or other methods you can find throughout the game. So if Sajiro is not available as a confidant at night, you could just read a book to increase your guts. But in order to start her 8th rank, you will need level 4 charm, which will take a good while to get to if you intend to get Makoto as a girlfriend like I did. Aside from two social stat grindings and the fact that you don't get a discount until rank 7 does put her low on the list for me. But she is massively useful in what you can buy from her, and bonding with her can increase your guts. You never know if she's poisoning your system or not, but at least you can come out a stronger and better man afterwards. And so does she. Well, I was saying that teenage test subjects are quite valuable in the medical research industry. So I'll provide you the medicine for your entrance exams, and in exchange, you'll be my guinea pig. Hifume Togo of the Star Arcana Interesting fact, Hifume was originally going to be a Phantom Thief in the game, but was scrapped to remain as a confidant. Not even Persona 5 Royal could add her as a member. Anyway, Hifume is a confidant that Yusuke recommends that you start bonding with on June 26. You will have to pay a transit fee every time to visit her at a church, where she practices her skills as she's a League Championship player in a Japanese game called Shogi. Never heard of it until this game. You will need to be at level 3 charm to start your bond with her as she teaches Joker tactics that he will use in the metaverse. At rank 1, you could swap current party members with backup members during a battle whenever it's Joker's turn. At rank 3, you can have a backup member do a follow-up attack if Joker downs an enemy. At rank 5, you can attempt an escape even if you're surrounded by enemies. And at rank 7, you can earn double the amount of money if a battle is won in one turn after an ambush. At rank 9, you will allow yourself to instantly escape a battle without having to wait for your opportunity to do so. And at max rank, you can swap current party members with backup members during anyone's turn and not just Joker's. Looking at all these benefits, you can tell that bonding with her will help you in battles massively. While you do lose a turn swapping members, being able to do this helps a ton in the latter part of the game. So you can avoid your characters getting KO'd, or you can swap to a character whose persona can weaken the enemy, increasing the chances of an all-out attack, or just getting less game overs. So what are the downsides with Hufume? 
Well, other than needing your charm to be at rank 3 to start your confidant with her, you will need max knowledge to get her mementos request after rank 7. Now, the upside to this is that knowledge is one of the easiest stats to max out on your first playthrough, and will likely be the first because you can just look up the answers in class with an unlimited lifeline. Very useful confidant, and one you will definitely need to bond with, even if you can't max her out. Check. It's checkmate, no matter how you look at it. Please concede. To concede is an act of admitting that you have lost, with grace. If you aspire to become a shogi player, I recommend that you take your study of the game to heart. Ryuji Sakamoto of the Chariot Arcana if not on, chances are Ryuji was probably the number one character that everyone maxed out on their first playthrough. And for good reason, since he's not only one of your first confidants, but he requires no social stats to max out. Bonded with Ryuji at every opportunity can make him one of your strongest members at the start of the first few palaces, if not all of them. Other than the useful companion abilities offered by every Phantom Thief, at rank 7 he can provide the insta-kill where you automatically defeat an underleveled shadow in an ambush without engaging in a battle. While this may hinder you in getting in quick experience points and money, you can instantly gain a persona from that shadow without negotiation. This can make the process of grinding less tedious and long, so I will definitely say bond with Ryuji without a doubt. The only roadblock is that you can only initiate his 7th rank on specific days, Otherwise, he's a very useful and easy confidant I highly recommend maxing out on your first playthrough, like I did. Hey, this ain't like me, but I managed to change because you were here helping me. I got you all wrapped up in this shit, but stayed with me till the bitter end. You didn't abandon me, so thanks, man. Sajiro Sakura of the Hierophant Arcana. A grumpy man who seems unwelcoming at first may very well have a heart of gold on the inside, and that's who Sajiro is. His confidant starts on April 20th in the evening during the deadline for the first palace. Bonding with Sajiro will not only teach Joker how to make coffee and curry, but he can also raise your kindness stat too. Which is ironic considering how he was treating you the first few times you were here. You protected some woman from a man forcing himself on her. He got injured, then sued you, right? That's what you get for sticking your nose in a matter between two adults. I mean, my god, it's like you see women as people or something. Kids these days. At rank 2, you can make coffee that slightly restores SP to one ally. At rank 4, you can make curry that slightly restores SP to all allies, and further ranks will increase the amount of SP you gain from making coffee and curry. The downside of Sujiro is that you can only rank him up to 4 before you have to wait until sometime after the events of the 4th palace when Futaba joins the Phantom Thieves. And after 6 ranks, you must have max kindness in order to continue Sujiro's confidant at rank 7, making it almost impossible to get his mementos request and max rank on your first playthrough. Now, Sujiro is not only useful to increase your kindness, but to make SP items. Which, if you played the game before, running out of SP is a major pain in processing through the palaces. You can manage fine if you go to certain vending machines on a weekly basis to buy SP drinks, but making coffee or curry is free. The downside is that by making coffee or curry, you could be making a less effective version if your rank with Sajiro is low and you will be choosing to have the evening time slot pass by. So while this benefit should be used sparingly, it can actually be massively useful and efficient if you bond with another confidant who can make the coffee and curry for you without wasting your time slot. Who is this confidant? Well, you'll find out soon enough. And it's likely because of this confidant that Sajiro is not lower on the list. Great character, useful perk, especially at later ranks and when you have another certain confidant. Sojiro is one character that I definitely recommend get to know before you pass him off as some neglectful asshole. Because he's not. Sojiro is awesome. Either way, I won't ask you to work for free. If you agree to help me, then I'll teach you how to make the perfect cup of coffee. 
Not a bad trade, eh? Shinya Oda of the Tower Arcana, the youngest confidant who has this persona under his arcana. Ew! And I thought the innuendos with On were bad. Anyway, Shinya is a confidant that is connected to a mementos request that you get from Mishima on September 4th called Winners Don't Use Cheats. Without spoiling what the mementos request is about, attempting to complete it will lead you to Shinya in the Akihabara district of Tokyo. Just like with Sajiro, Bonding with Shinya will raise your kindness stat. At rank 1, you can perform a downshot where Joker uses all of his bullets to down one enemy to increase the chances of an all-out attack. At rank 2, you can start an ambush battle with a gun-based all-out attack called Bullet Hail. At rank 3, you can use a warning shot for a chance to scare shadows during negotiations, which honestly never worked for me, they just immediately go hostile after that. At rank 5, you can increase the number of bullets you carry. At rank 6, you can decrease the amount of bullets required to down an enemy. At rank 8, you can increase the damage done by bullet hail. And at max rank, Joker's gunfire can damage an enemy even if they are resistant to gunfire. Wow, that's a ton of useful benefits. Remember when I said that Iway was mostly useless because the gun customization was lacking? Well, with a kid still in elementary school, Shinya can make the use of guns an efficient way to finish off a battle and decrease the chances of running out of ammo, since you'll end up using your personas and melee weapons more. While Shinya comes way later in the game, his perks offer a huge advantage in battle, making guns more of an option than a lifeline. So yeah, who would have known that a kid playing video games would teach you more about guns than an adult selling modeled guns and has been in some... intense situations. Also, while I had to wait to finish off most of his confidant on my second playthrough, I gotta say, his momentous request actually made me cry. Shinya is often a least favorite confidant among the community, likely because he's a kid, but his story and request for the Phantom Thieves I found was very touching and heartbreaking. Shinya does not require any social stats to max out his confidant, so if you get the time, I'd say max him out on your first playthrough. The ability to use guns more efficiently is such a satisfying experience. So, get smoked and kick ass with this badass gamer. Come on, you gotta aim. No, 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 you're just stopping their movement by doing that. Ugh, no, not like that. Are you taking this seriously? You gotta focus on your second shot! Caroline and Justine of the Strength Arcana. The Twin Wardens are one of the most useful and pain-in-the-ass confidants to max out. You interact with them in the Velvet Room when the mission for the Second Palace starts. At every rank, they require you to show them a specific persona with a specific ability. And as you rank up, you can gain more options in leveling up your personas. At rank 1, you can fuse three personas in a group guillotine. At rank 3, you can put a persona in lockdown for days so it can learn a resistance spell as you do other things in the real world. At rank 5, you can increase the amount of possible fusions in a group guillotine. At rank 8, you can have your persona learn stronger resistance spells from having it in lockdown. And at max rank, they will allow you to fuse a persona at a higher level than your current level at the cost of money. Now these perks will help Joker gain and create more powerful personas. And being able to fuse personas at a greater level is a significant advantage, especially in New Game Plus. The unique thing about their confidant is that you can rank them up multiple times in a row and no time will pass. So their confidant is like a free confidant point with no time advancement, making them an easy and recommended confidant to max out on your first playthrough. However, there are problems with this confidant. For one, you will need to level up through the course of the game in order to fuse the personas they require. The last request requires a level 51 persona, and during my first playthrough, I didn't get around to completing their confidant till after I secured my infiltration route in the 7th palace of the game, which is very near the end of the game. 
However, the biggest pain in the ass is fusing the right persona with the exact skill required. This can be achievable if you just experiment with fusions till you find the right fusion to create the required persona, but most of the times, I had to look up how to create these personas with the exact required skill, and trust me, there's a lot of math and precise calculations that you can never predict by just fooling around. And with this confidant, I strongly recommend looking up a guide. Also, remember when I said that you can duplicate skill cards with Yusuke? Well, this is one instance where that perk can actually be useful. One Memento's request called The Killer Who Cleans Up Trash can earn you the High Counter skill card, a skill required for the Warden's last request. From there, you have Yusuke duplicate the High Counter card so it doesn't go to waste, then use this card with the last persona to complete Caroline and Justine's confidant. If this all sounds like a mouthful, well, you just summed up their confidant. But I highly recommend bonding with them and maxing them out on your first playthrough, even if you have to go through the trouble of researching and grinding for hours just to complete one request. Because not only can this increase your Persona Compendium, but this can benefit you a lot in New Game Plus. It may be a lot of work, but it's totally worth it to work towards your rehabilitation. Hey! Are you laughing at us? Know your place, inmate! Futaba Sakura of the Hermit Arcana. Since she is the only phantom thief that is not playable and has a very unique role in the group, her confident perks are very unique to her own set of skills, and she's the only phantom thief that comes with a mementos request. You can start her bond as early as August 31st. At rank 1, she will occasionally cast Kaja or heal up party members during a battle, at rank 2, she can occasionally scan an entire floor of mementos, making it convenient for the player to find the exit or the treasure chest without having to go through a maze. At rank 4, she can sometimes instantly cause a holdup at the start of a battle. At rank 6, she can occasionally cast charge or SP recovery during battle. At rank 9, she can swap 2 or 3 KO'd members with backup members. And at rank 10, she can occasionally nullify a fatal attack. So, yeah, not much to say other than that these are huge convenience perks in battle. While Hifume is more about changing positions in battle or running away from one, Futaba can turn a battle in everyone's favor to gain the upper hand. The only downside with Futaba is that you will need to be at level 4 kindness to start her second rank. So, chances are you may not max her out on your first playthrough, but she is much more useful and easier compared to Haru, where you needed max proficiency while being near the end of the game. Futaba is overall a great character. Top 3 favorite female characters for me, in fact. Hey, heck, top 3 favorite characters in this game in general. And it's just touching and seeing you open up to her, as she offers more support for the team that she will fight for. I did it! The trophy's gonna pop in the upper right of my room here, right? So... Uh... Well, I... Taranisuke Yoshida of the Sun Arcana On May 6, Sojiro will give Joker the key so he will be allowed to walk around Tokyo at night, on top of getting a part-time job at night which is a requirement to get this confidant, as by listening to this politician's speeches, you have to try to catch a conversation with this guy by working at the beef bowl shop twice so Yoshida can notice you. On certain nights, you can increase your bond with Yoshida which can increase your charm stat, and the unique thing about Yoshida is that you do not need a Sun Persona to deepen your bond with him as every interaction will rank up your confidant without having to deepen your bond like with the other characters. And no social stats are required, which makes Yoshida a very efficient confidant to max out on your first playthrough. Which is odd since I only did two ranks with him in my first playthrough. My mistake there. At rank 2, you can negotiate with a shadow for more money or items during a holdup. At rank 3, you can demand a shadow for a larger amount of money. At rank 5, you can increase the chances of an enemy giving you a rare item during negotiation. 
At rank 8, you can sometimes skip negotiations and instantly obtain a persona, and at max rank, you can gain higher level personas who would usually turn you down for being a lower level. It sucks I didn't get past the second rank on my first playthrough because Yoshida's perks are massively useful. Yoshida can help you gain more personas more efficiently, as well as grind out money through negotiation. And trust me, you will need a lot of money for the two confidants I'm about to mention soon. This confidant is perfectly designed for first playthroughs, since it doesn't require any social bond grinding like the others do, and you can gain more during a holdup with very little effort. The only downside is that he will no longer be available after November 11th for story related reasons, so make sure you max him out before this deadline. Politics may not be for everyone, but this is one politician you should not only stand for, but actually give a damn about. I will strive for the royal road of politics, thinking of you as you walk down your own path. But if you ever find yourself in harm's way on your journey, I will be there to help you. We'll be comrades who reform the world together. Yuki Mishima of the Moon Arcana Mishima is a very unique confidant and the very first confidant that I maxed out on my first playthrough, and for a very damn good reason other than being a great character. You will automatically gain rank 1 on May 6th, and then you will be able to start rank 2 on May 8th. And just like with Yoshida, having a moon persona is not required to max out Mishima as every interaction will increase your rank. At rank 1, any backup members can earn some XP during a battle. At rank 3, you can increase the amount of XP after winning a battle. At rank 5, backup members will gain more XP. At rank 7, you can greatly increase XP after battle. And at max rank, all backup members will gain the exact same amount of XP as current party members, even if they weren't participating. So yeah, you can see why Mishima is a very damn useful confidant. All the perks are XP related and it helps reduce the amount of grinding needed since in most RPGs, backup members usually gain no XP during battle. But in Persona 5, they give you the option to make grinding more efficient and less tedious, as XP is needed to not only be more powerful, but to gain more powerful personas through both Fusion and of course other characters' own persona. However, there is another great advantage with Mishima which can be both an advantage and a drawback. Mishima over the course of the game will give the players momentous requests as the story progresses. However, bonding with him can give you a few mementos requests as well, which could be very damn useful since going to mementos would be a waste of time if you only had like one or two requests. However, you will be required to complete some of these requests in order to continue as confidant, so I would highly recommend Max and Mishima out on your first playthrough, as New Game Plus offers the max rank perk once you start rank 1 so you do not need to worry about grinding as much as you can save several mementos requests to complete in one go on your second playthrough. However you choose to go at it, Mishima is a very useful confidant and a very easy confidant to max out, giving you and backup members more XP, as well as assholes whose hearts need to be changed. This much dedication from Mishima honestly makes me wish he was a phantom thief as well, because despite his major flaw during the story, he is a very good guy with a good heart deep down. Um, you guys are the Phantom Thieves, aren't you? Cheheya Mifun of the Fortune Arcana This confidant might be an odd one to some of you. Mostly because for one, Mifun requires a lot of steps to even start her confidant. You must first visit her once, starting as early as June 22nd, then visit her again and be willing to pay for a holy stone that costs 100,000 yen, go see her again, complete a mementos request for one of her clients, and then come back and start her first rank. That's five days required to even start her confidant. That's ridiculous. 
and it costs 100,000 yen in the process, so how the hell could she be worth it in number 2 on this list? Well, for a very damn good reason. At rank 1, you can pay her to give you a luck read in which will raise your growth rate of a selected social stat for one day. At rank 3, you can increase the amount of money you earn from battles if you go right into the metaverse on that day. At rank 5, you can get a preview of what other confidants will give you at the next rank. At rank 7, you can deepen your bond with a confidant of your choice. And at max rank, you get a full preview of everything a confidant can give you. So, yeah, you can probably see why she is high on this list. The major problem with her is that she takes the longest confidant to start, and you will need to pay her money to make her perks useful, even if you maxed her out. But her perks can massively decrease the amount of grinded required if you're aiming to 100% all confidant links and social stats. Now, being able to see a preview of what perks a confidant can give you is cool and all, but you have the internet and videos like this to find that information for free. However, luck reading can give you extra points in increasing your social stats, and say if you're gonna go through a long run in the metaverse, say like try to complete an entire palace in one go, by seeing the food and getting the money reading, you can increase the amount of currency you get from battles, which is the most efficient way to earn money since part-time jobs don't really give you much, if really anything at all. However, the Affinity reading is probably the most useful perk, with the exception of the four confidants that rank up as the story progresses, along with Mishima and Yoshida, every confidant requires you to spend more time with them in order to deepen your bond so you can get the up sign on their confidant card. If you don't see the up sign, that means you gotta spend time with them which wastes an entire afternoon or evening. A definite downside you will face for a good chunk of the game. You could deepen your bond more by carrying a persona of the arcana that the confidant represents, which is highly recommended, or you could visit the Miji Shrine and give up yen to deepen your bonds. However, going to the Miji Shrine will eat up a time slot, whereas paying the food, while more expensive, will not eat up a time slot and could actually save you a day of deepening your bond with a confidant. Despite how expensive this confidant is, her perks of being able to raise your social stats, money, and affinity with other confidants can be a huge time saver, giving you a chance to max out as many confidants as possible on your first playthrough. It may sound like a ripoff at first, but in the end, you should feel satisfied that you bonded with this fortune teller, as she is more than what she seems to be. As the fortune teller who changes fates, I will guide you so you can avoid misfortune. <laughs> and now it's time for honorable mentions. And by that, I mean I'm gonna rank the four confidants who rank up through story progression from least best to best. Sai Nijima of the Judgment Arcana. Other than being able to add experience points to fuse in the Judgment Personas and Gen Satan as a fusible persona, she offers no perks outside of what every other confidant does. Goro Ikechi of the Justice Arcana. Other than a set of perks at rank 6 that I won't say for spoiler reasons, he's pretty much the same as Sai, only being useful in Fusion Justice Personas. Morgana of the Magician Arcana. He gets the same Phantom Thieves perks as every other member, but he also introduces the player with the ability to craft infiltration tools and a chance for Joker to steal an item from an enemy during a melee attack. Igor of the Fool's Arcana. His perks are the most useful as he unlocks the good use of Third Eye to find secrets and treasures in palaces. He can also add bonus XPs to fusions for all Arcanas and not just the Fool Arcana, unlock shadow negotiations, and the most useful, being able to carry more personas. And now, the number one best confidant in Persona 5. Sadeo Kawakami of the Temperous Arcana. That's right, my second playthrough girlfriend, uh, I mean my homeroom teacher, who we find out to be working as a part-time maid, is who I consider the best and most useful confidant in Persona 5. 
You have to participate in an event with Ryuji and Mishima where you attempt to call a maid, and little did Joker expect as Ryuji and Mishima go fleeing for their lives, pussies, the maid turns out to be your homeroom teacher. Now, in order to trigger this event, you have to complete the second palace as early as possible. This event can be triggered as early as May 24th, so I recommend completing the second palace the moment it becomes available. After a series of events, you must call her up on LeBlanc's phone, but to start her confidant, your guts must be at level 3. So if you're still near the start of the game, I highly recommend getting your guts up to level 3 as soon as possible as Kawakami has some of the most useful perks in the game. At rank 1, Kawakami will occasionally allow you to slack off in class. These are special events that won't have you miss out on any questions for exams, as the ability to slack off will give you the option to read a book, craft an infiltration tool, listen to the lecture anyway for a knowledge stat, or fall asleep for a random bond increase with one of your confidants. At rank 3, you can request Kawakami to do laundry or make coffee for you. At rank 5, you can also slack off in other classes with a distraction from Kawakami, at rank 7, you can request Kawakami to craft infiltration tools or to make curry for you. And the most useful perk in Persona 5! At max rank, you can request a free massage from Kawakami after going through the metaverse, allowing you to do an activity at night. Now, while Kawakami doesn't give you any perks that helps you in battles, she makes the grinding and progression in the real world very efficient, and she is the main reason you can 100% everything in this game. Remember when I said that making coffee or curry for free SP has a nighttime slot pass? Well, with Kawakami, she can make both at whatever rank level you have with Sujiro, while you go out and do whatever you want at night, such as bonding with another confidant. With her being able to do your laundry, make curry, coffee, and craft infiltration tools for you, you are able to do two night activities in one night. So she could be making curry while you hang out with a drunk woman at a bar. And being able to slack off in class, while it doesn't happen very often, is a huge advantage. This can help you read every book in the game to increase your social stats, or craft every infiltration tool as both are required to get a trophy, and usually when you decide to go to the metaverse, you are reluctantly choosing to spend the entire day in a palace or mementos, as Joker will be too exhausted to do any nighttime activities. But at max rank, you can just go straight to the telephone and request a massage from Kawakami allowing Joker to have enough energy to do whatever he wants at night. This perk is considered the best perk in the game because you can now only sacrifice your daytime slot going into the metaverse as opposed to the whole day. And hey, my number 2, 3, and 4 confidant picks are all nighttime confidants, so being able to do nighttime activities after a day in the metaverse is a massive advantage. Kawakami is the best confidant because she reduces the amount of opportunities you waste on your nighttime slot by either filling in for an activity for you or making you be able to spend it. And slacking off in class can help you not only get two trophies, but raise your social stats faster. So once you get started on your first palace, start buying every book centered around guts, spend time with the doctor, or drink a specific tea from the diner to raise your guts to level 3 as fast as possible. And once the second palace is available, complete it as soon as possible, because Kawakami is the number one confidant you just can't miss out on. So yes, our homeroom teacher is indeed the best confidant in Persona 5. Life really is a roller coaster, isn't it? I went from being a teacher to being a maid to dating a high school student. So there you go, those were my top 17 best confidants in Persona 5, and we'll see for ourselves how much Persona 5 Royal changes that. While I still have yet to play the other Persona games, being able to gain abilities and perks through social links is one of the major factors that makes this game, and heck, the Persona series as a whole, one of the best JRPGs ever made. 
With massive advantages, memorable characters, and engaging stories, the Confidant system is one of the major factors that makes Persona 5 the masterpiece we know and love today. If you still have yet to beat it or play it yourself, I highly recommend you play Persona 5 all the way through. I hope this video has become a useful guide in helping you beat this game more efficiently. And if you were to rank these confidence differently, leave it in the comments below how you would rank them. I'm Nitsa Gamer, and if you excuse me, I'm gonna debate to myself who the better girlfriend is.